All right, so uh, I want to speak about uh, optimizing search relevance using Kirky. And uh, I jumped into this at the very last moment. So I put together slides from two different talks or even three. And apologies if, you, if, if you've heard this one before. Yeah, so I don't know, has anybody heard about Quirky or is even using Quirky? Hillis has, someone else? Okay, so great, so then it's all new. Um, well, who am I? So, uh, so as I said originally uh, in the beginning, my name is Rene. Uh, I've worked in search for 15 years. I used to be a freelance uh, consultant, uh, but now uh, I've joined Open Source Connections uh, as director e-commerce search and that topic of e-commerce search, uh, I would say, has been with me, around me, uh, through my professional career for, for many years. And I've worked with uh, some of Germany's uh, top 10 uh, online retailers in that domain of search. I'm also a co-founded organizer of MySys. Has anybody heard of MySys, that mixed camp e-commerce search, that conference? Here it again. So that's, it's amazing how separate the communities in Berlin are. Yeah, so that's a an event on e-commerce search that uh, takes place on the day um, after Berlin Buzzwords every year. And it's about 100 people uh, coming from different backgrounds, um, uh, all working e-commerce search. And it's also a mix of formats, a conference and uh, question answering format, question answers format, and uh, finally a, a bar camp. Uh, and then maintain of quirky, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, how, why uh, uh, I can probably uh, share some thoughts about it. And uh, technology-wise, uh, I have a background in open source technologies, uh, Lucene, Solar, Elasticsearch. Uh, I said I'm director e-commerce search at uh, Open Source Connections. So Open Source Connections is a company uh, that is a consultancy focusing on relevance and try, we try to empower um, search teams in that domain of search quality optimization. Yeah, so I think the, the two talks today are from, are from very different domains. So uh, we're less, uh, 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 we have less focus in that domain of uh, platform and uh, operations, but it's about the relevance, bringing back the, the right results in the right order. And uh, the way we do this at Open Source Connections is we try to empower the teams through many ways. Yeah, so one is, uh, we have a relevance Slack, and uh, if you go there, you'll find uh, more than 2,700 people all interested in the domain. We had blog, ex, uh, books, uh, and, and uh, reports. So you see a few of those uh, books that uh, were written by colleagues of mine. Relevant search might be an interesting one uh, and, and quite a known one. Um, what else do we do? We do trainings, uh, consulting, and uh, we have a few committers uh, on board of our team. On this note of uh, relevance, so next week we have a conference here in Berlin, uh, the Haystack Conference uh, takes place on Tuesday, so you can still uh, buy a ticket. It's not too expensive, but there aren't too many tickets left, but there's also an online option. Um, and then on Monday, we have a search technology meetup. Uh, it's waiting list already, uh, but uh, maybe it's worth joining. And then on uh, Thursday next week, we have a hackathon uh, hosted by Gina AI. So we want to make it a, a week of search. Yeah, so I, I thought I, uh, I want to share this with the, with the Elastic community. So let's talk about Quirky. What is Quirky? How can I use it? Uh, what uh, happens under the hood? And uh, let's go for it. So Quirky is a library for query rewriting. So that means before you go to the uh, field analytics, uh, you can pre-process the query. And there are many ways to do this. And the way Quirky is doing it is it's a plugin uh, that works uh, within the search engine and finally spits out a Lucene query. And uh, it has a bit of a history. So it started back in 2014 uh, uh, for Solar. And we'll see later that it has a bit of a uh, layered uh, design. And uh, by help of this, it can also uh, be plugged into the other search engines, so Elasticsearch, and uh, starting from this week also into OpenSearch. So we have a first release for OpenSearch. Um, it's being used by quite some big companies. So Otto is using it, uh, MediaMarkt Saturn, uh, more internationally, uh, if you look at Asta, Walmart Labs, uh, Rubik's, most of these are uh, solar 
uh, companies. So there's a bit of longer history um, uh, in Quirky for Solar, uh, but there are a few who uh, also use um, Elastic. So a query rewriting library, why should we rewrite a query? And I wanna go through a few aspects. Yeah, so why, why are we usually, or why do we wanna rewrite uh, uh, the query? Uh, I'm not so much focusing on the actual application. Yeah, so I've mentioned in the uh, outline of this talk uh, that is shown on meetup.com, uh, if you wanna use an open source engine, search engine uh, for uh, let's say e-commerce, there's a bit of a feature gap. Uh, I talk a bit about this a bit later, but uh, there's a whole world uh, that we could uh, show or where we could show uh, how it's being used. But at the kind of linguistic levels and uh, uh, intent levels, uh, we could say uh, we can at least find these three aspects and I wanna go through them one by one. So the word level symbols and semantics, so what does that mean? So uh, synonyms, yeah? So we have a keyword-based lookup and obviously uh, there might be a case where the exact query token uh, does not match, so we wanna apply synonyms. Synonyms is something that uh, we also find in the analysis chain. Um, it has some issues in the analysis chain. They're all fixed in query. <laughs> I think I can say this. And um, uh, word breaks. Uh, so for example, if you uh, look at German or Dutch, uh, we are, I think the Dutch outcompound us. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, uh, that means, uh, uh, it could be that the user gives you the compound in the query and then you want to break up uh, the query into its parts and maybe search one word in one field, the other word in the other field. You can all do this uh, doing query pre-processing. Orthographic normalization, of course. Yeah, so uh, spelling variation, typos. Uh, there could also be a bit of a semantic interpretation. Yeah, so I've, <laughs> I've created another example from Dutch, right? Uh, so for von Hunden. Uh, for Hunden, so that's food for dogs, but there's also Hunden for, yeah, so uh, dog food written as a compound, yeah, so there is this um, interpretation of this uh, semantic relation that we get from the preposition here, so we want to change the tokens, the structure of the query, and we can do this in the pre-processing step. And last but not least, there's also the idea uh, that we could say, oh, I look at this query and this part is the brand yeah, versus the product type or versus color or size. Yeah? And then I can say, there's no need to match brown in the color field if I recognize it as a, uh, as a, as a brand name. Yeah? So I can do this in this pre-processing step. So that's basically talking about those word level symbols and semantics, but there could also be something uh, in, this, uh, in, in the pre-processing that we do to interpret the query. Yeah, so let's say uh, the query is laptop and uh, then I wanna bring laptop computers to the top or notebook, it's not about the thing where I take notes, it's about the device. Yeah, I wanna bring that to the top. Um, there could also be a, a kind of a, a penalty. penalty. Uh, so the query is laptop and uh, the accessory problem is quite common in e-commerce. Uh, we see all the accessories, but not the laptop. What should we do? We should push back everything that contains sleeve, for instance, yeah, so that uh, the accessories go back or uh, all the things that uh, are put into a certain category could be either promoted or demoted. And then we could also apply a hard filter. Yeah, so if the, the query contains mouse and we are electronics and we know some fancy description has something about mouse traps, could we filter and, and put it into the, uh, the category. And last but not least, in the <clears throat> domain of e-commerce, uh, there could also be some seller interest. Yeah, so uh, if that's the query, a certain query, I want to push certain products. Yeah, so maybe I have a contract with someone who, with, with one of the suppliers. Uh, so for that query, I want to push things to the top. Or sometimes I have a contract that says, um, I uh, uh, I must not show certain products for certain queries, so I apply filter rule maybe. Yeah, and, and there could be many things, playing with margin or whatever. Another example could be uh, not so much uh, related to money, but to brand reputation. So imagine I'm a fashion brand and my best sellers are the basic t-shirts, but that's adverse to my fashion reputation. Yeah, so I wanna show the, uh, the fashion stuff. So if I can detect this uh, using some signal, 
uh, I can maybe rewrite the query and push the fancy stuff to the, to the top. So I think that these are aspects of why I want to rewrite uh, a query. And uh, before I go deeper into it, uh, I want to give a, a short demo. And the demo is taken from an example project that is called Chorus. <clears throat> so Chorus um, uh, basically is a collection uh, of components that give you an e-commerce application. Yeah? You fire up a Docker image, and then you get an UI, you get an Elasticsearch uh, with Kibana, uh, you get Quirky already installed on the uh, Elastic, um, Smooth, that's a, a user interface that I'm going to show in a minute to maintain certain rules. Cupid is a tool, uh, it's a labeling tool. Yeah? And uh, so that is, uh, I maintain a catalog of queries and uh, uh, label my results, say, oh, this is a good result, that's a bad result. And I change something, my configuration, order changes, is there a metric change? Yeah? So that's for offline experimentation. Um, Keycloak, uh, uh, Prometheus, uh, Grafana, so uh, a setup of, of common tools that you would uh, uh, use to set up a, an e-commerce search. Originally, course was created for Solar with the corresponding components. Uh, and uh, later on, you will see uh, that in Smui, we still have the Solar labels, but it works with Elasticsearch now. So uh, I want to go to this demo web shop and show an example of a bad query. Uh, and I think that's already the results of that uh, bad query. Uh, so that's the uh, reactive search uh, UI. And it goes to an index of electronics and we see all the accessories at the top. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty bad. And we have like uh, 776 results. And uh, also if you have a query like uh, laptop, we find even fewer results. Yeah, so we have a synonym problem and a relevance problem. Yeah, so we find all the accessories at the top or we get all the accessories back. And uh, obviously laptop doesn't find uh, the synonyms. So <clears throat> what we could do is uh, we could go to this uh, UI and create rules. Yeah? And uh, I wanna start with laptop and fix the synonym problem first. So I create a rule for laptop and say, I wanna create a new rule and uh, so I have my input declaration up here and say, uh, I wanna create a synonym rule, uh, which is bidirectional, oh, sorry, bidirectional. And uh, I wanna say laptop equals to notebook. Yeah, so that's my, my first um, um, rule that I create uh, to uh, make these uh, two equal. And you see still the solar here, but it pushes it to elastic. Um, and can push to several stages. So I did this right now. And now let's see what happens if you search for laptop. So we get 819. So that's a lot more than 100 something that I uh, that we saw originally. And we should see, don't know if you get the equal results. Yeah, it's the same for notebook now. Yeah, so let's go to laptop. So that's basically a simple way to create a synonym. You could say, okay, I can do the same thing using synonyms, txt. Um, now let's fix this relevance problem. Yeah, so now let's look at how we can push to the top stuff that uh, we don't want to see there or that we want to see there and demote everything else. So we could start creating um, a, a rule where we maybe have an insight and demote everything that has spare in it. Yeah, but it's always better to create a positive rule. Uh, otherwise, it would be a whack a mole. And uh, so uh, I have this one insight and say, I create an up rule. So I boost up a lot, everything that contains uh, an Intel, yes, an Intel processors. Yeah, bags don't have a processor, uh, but laptops have. And um, let's say, what, see what happens if we push this. Uh, so let's see. So we got the Intel, looks a bit better. Uh, What's the yeah, so, and then the there aren't too many Intel, maybe I didn't push it enough, I think, but then you could also add a rule for AMD. Yeah, so AMD actually, no, I created the wrong rule, sorry. 
There are a lot more AMD processors and boosting them up a lot. And we should now say, we should now see proper laptops. Yeah, so that's basically the idea. You could also apply filter rules and so on. And this is just one thing that we can do in, in Quirky. And the interesting thing is uh, due to this tool around this, we don't have to create separate boosting rules for laptop versus uh, notebook. Uh, this is uh, created under the hood. Yeah, so basically uh, we say, oh, if this is a bi-directional synonym, then the rules, the boosting rules should be applied to both. Uh, so this is one of the rewriters. And I'm going back to Quirky in a bit how the rewriters work under the hood. They're further rewriters. And indeed, you can even uh, plug in your own rewriter. Yeah, it's a framework to plug in rewriters. Uh, I want to add an example for one more rewriter, uh, which fixes spellings. Yeah? So let's say we observe in our tracking um, uh, that we have a spelling, a misspelling. And I just flipped two letters now. I don't know whether this is a free, frequent thing. Uh, so let's see what happens. And let's see what happens if we, yeah. So, I f so what we do now is we fix the spelling in the first rewriter and the second rewriter applies all the other rules, yeah? like the synonym rules and the, the boosting rules. Yeah? So you see the, the benefit of this, this architecture. And I think, uh, Feature-wise, this boosting is nothing we get out of the box in, in the search engines. And also the, the way it is applied is quite powerful. So uh, we'll talk about this uh, in a bit. Questions so far? I mean, we're a small group. So if you feel like you want to ask a question. Go ahead. Would you give users the, would you show them that you rewrote the laptop to laptop? No. <laughs> so uh, that's a good question, or it implies a good question, actually. Um, I would say if you're, it's an important question. Yeah? So if you change the query, do you tell the user or don't you? Yeah, but, and you have to be very sure about your rewriting to not tell the user. Yeah? So um, if it's a bit of, a, you know, I have results for the original query and uh, I don't, uh, uh, and, and they're all valid. Yeah? So it's not a, a typo. <laughs> Maybe a bit of an alternative concept. Maybe I tell the user, um, uh, but this I think would be an example where you say, "Okay, this doesn't make sense, and it's ninety-nine percent safe to do." Yeah, and then I wouldn't tell the user actually. It's um, it's fixed somehow because the. Uh, if it's written, uh, rewritten to a laptop, actually, the laptop gets highlighted. Yeah? And I think that's how it works. Okay. All right, uh, let's look a bit deeper into Quirky. So how is this all happening uh, uh, under the hood? And that's basically the, the software architecture underneath. Um, so we have this input uh, at the left, yeah? this string laptop, yeah? the user input. And then we have a parser that is a quirky parser. So it's not a parser in the sense of Lucene. It's not a parser in the sense of um, a query builder in Elastic. This is just a component in quirky that can be plugged in again. Yeah, so that's at several levels of parser, but usually you go, just go with the standard. And what it does is it takes a string and creates a quirky query. So that's a representation of specific uh, object model. Yeah, so Quirky has its own object model for the query. Yeah, so it's similar to what we see in Lucene, uh, but there are some additions to it, and it's hard to extend. Yeah, so that makes it very robust, and normally you shouldn't. Yeah, so, and uh, it. Uh, so now we have, uh, let's say, some user input formulated as a query, and now we apply a chain of rewriters. Yeah, so. Uh, the first rewriter sees the query, manipulates it. Uh, that serves as an input to the second rewriter that again manipulates it and so on. Yeah, so like in the example, let's say the first rewriter was this 
rewriter that fixed the spelling. And the second rewriter is the one that applied the synonym and uh, the boostings. Yeah, so and so on. Yeah, so we have have a chain of rewriters, and I go into uh, rewriters that come with Quirky in a bit, uh, but you can plug in your own. Yeah, so it's a framework. Um, and then after this rewriting step, uh, we uh, get a uh, we need to produce a Lucene query that can be executed. Yeah, so finally, we need to produce Lucene. And there's an internal Lucene query builder in Quirky. And last but not least, the whole thing needs to be plugged into the search engine. So there's a query builder, a Quirky query builder that extends the DSL, the, the query DSL for Elasticsearch and for OpenSearch. In Solar, they have the, the concept of a queue parser. And then we have uh, uh, down here, uh, certain components that uh, control the flow. Yeah, so there's a controller. And uh, then we have a, an adapter that allows me to see some parameters from the outer world, uh, to see some context. Uh, uh, but in the end, everything is kind of abstracted away. Yeah, so if you look at this, so up to here, we don't even know about Lucene. Yeah, so the query rewriting happens without Lucene. Then, okay, we produce a Lucene query. So finally, uh, we have a dependency on Lucene. And then uh, we have the plugin level for the three search engines so far. Uh, there's an ongoing project that's called Quirky Unplugged. Uh, what that means, it stops here. Yeah, so, and then you can rewrite the query outside the search engine. And instead of producing a Lucene query, you would then produce a query uh, in the DSL of that um, uh, search engine. Yeah, so that's an interesting project. Uh, the plugin has its benefits. You get access to the index and the rewriting that, that is beneficial in some point at some points. But then if you look at large teams, yes, you might have a team that just wants to do rewriting and another or, or relevance and another team that wants to do uh, the operations of the search engine, then you probably want to separate the two. Yeah? And that's why we create the unplugged as well. And does it mean you could use this with something like the algorithm? You could, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's look at rewriters in action. Yeah, so the rewriter that does the synonyms and that does the boosting is the common rules rewriter. And that's when most people think about Quirky, they think of this common rules rewriter. Yeah, so it's, it's really powerful, you can have a lot of rules, you can uh, make rules conditional on user segments if you want, uh, the input matching uh, can do wildcards and, and so on. Uh, so that's uh, the common rules rewriter. The replace rewriter is basically how I fix the spelling. Yeah, so also this one, I go into detail, uh, has, has a few more options. The number unit rewriter can uh, interpret a query like I see laptop and I see something that looks like this. So I say, okay, I search for laptop and then apply a filter. Yeah, and we look at this in a bit. Shingle rewriter is a bit outdated. Uh, so basically it uh, always combines two adjacent tokens. Uh, makes it one token as an alternative. Yeah, so that's a poor man's word break handling. And the word break uh, rewriter is the one uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier on. And of course, you can, as I said, you can plug in your own rewriter. So let's uh, look a bit deeper into uh, uh, the rewriters. So common rules rewriter. So uh, I've mentioned uh, this uh, process of creating synonyms, filters, uh, boosts. That's basically what a search manager would do. Yeah, so e-commerce companies usually have this, someone who is not a tech person uh, maintaining rules. And, uh, but then you can also give, go fancy. Yeah, you can say, oh, I have an input that is new and that says new. Usually this, this type of thing doesn't match or cheap. Yeah, or uh, yeah. So you could say, oh, I delete the new, but then uh, create a function. Yeah? So this is solar syntax. You can do the same using any uh, uh, elastic syntax. So as soon as you have such a prefix here, that means everything that follows is in the syntax of the search engine and it will be parsed. And whenever uh, this uh, trigger, so to say, is uh, set, uh, this will be added as a boost. Yeah? So we have an up uh, to the query. Or something uh, saying a special offer. Okay, we can't really find special offer. Maybe, but it's not very common. Uh, but then we say, oh, we, we look for everything that has a value in the strike through price. Yeah, so it's a, it's a reduced thing. And uh, 
I don't know what that means. Yeah, so some some boost uh, by by price, I guess. Uh, so you you can imagine it in in Elastic Query here as well. Um, so the replace rewriter, I said that's the one that we used for a laptop. Uh, but then uh, you can also say, oh, I can use this for normalization. Yeah. So any grammatical form of newer, so uh, uh, superlative, newest, new offers, I just make this new. Yeah. So, and then later on, uh, I can say, oh, and then I pass this on to the next rewriter, and that rewriter says, oh, I delete the new, and then boost by release date maybe. And so that's that's an option. Uh, that's another form of normalization, but a bit more contextualized. Yeah, so cheapest is not just any cheapest, it's cheapest smartphones. So you make a cheap smartphones, whatever that means. Uh, and then we can also replace characters and so on. Uh, and uh, we can also have some pattern matching yeah, so, so that we don't have to replace everything. Like in this example, yeah, uh, maybe if we flip the first two letters of smart, yeah, but then we can say, okay, uh, we, we just use a wildcard and pick up uh, what uh, is replaced by the wildcard so we can fix smartphones, smart, whatever. Yeah, so, um, all right, uh, I don't want to go through every detail here. Uh, I think my most common example here is, <laughs> Uh, or what I, uh, I use quite a lot is energy classes, yeah, A, A plus, A plus plus, and so on. The plus normally gets stripped off somewhere down there, but you can replace it with, with plus if you want. Number units, so that's the example where I said, okay, uh, we can interpret the 16 inch and so on. It can do um, unit conversion, so you can define that a centimeter has 10 millimeters, so then it doesn't really matter uh, whether this is, uh, uh, centimeters, inches, or whatever, and then you boost it to the range in which your data is kept, uh, or to the unit in which your data is kept and apply a range, and it has the uh, possibility to boost the original value. Yeah, so let's say uh, 16 inch is what the user has put in. Laptops usually are 15.6 and so on, so we don't want to have a sharp cut, but maybe there's one that is 16 inch. So we say, okay, we filter on a range, but boost uh, the closer we get to the original inch. Yeah, so that's something I can do uh, with this um, uh, rewriter. Word break compounds. So, uh, so it does two things. It breaks word and it compounds words uh, and combines. Um, a good thing I think is the place where it's being done. It's before the field analysis. So that means if I split something like uh, German has this, uh, Gender age plus the product type, yeah, kids jacket. Yeah, so it's one word. Uh, kids might be in one field, jacket in a different field. Yeah, so we can't really do this as part of the analysis chain. So we should do it prior to going through the analysis chain. And that's why, uh, uh, or that's the place where the rewriter does it. Yeah? And that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, how does it work under the hood? It uses a, an index field as a dictionary. Yeah, so it tries to find uh, breaks and uh, uses this field that could just be a copy field uh, of high value data uh, and uh, then um, uh, tries to create the forms. And uh, at least for German, but we could maybe create, uh, it's abstracted so we could add another language. Uh, we can also deal with language specific morphology for word breaks. Yeah, so in German, we have a nice compound, Arbeitsjacke. So Arbeit, work, labor, Jacke, jacket, uh, but there's an S. Yeah, so uh, we have a rule there uh, that says, okay, uh, this is one of this of this one example of this compounding morphology. So we can break it into that. Yeah, so that's that's a valid break. And also the other way around. So if someone searches for Hund, dog, Leine, leash, so then we can inject this E, and we know uh, we can create Hunde Leine. Yeah, so that's the common German word dog leash, and uh, Basically, we in German, we have quite a lot of those rules, uh, and we have, I think, implemented the most common 20 something rules. Yeah? So that's, uh, I think, quite a, 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 a powerful thing here. Yeah. And I, I don't want to brag too much, but I think I'm in the open source world, there isn't a better solution for uh, dealing with, with word breaks. All right. So I want to go a bit more into the technical detail. Yeah, so I've described how rewriters can be configured and what they do more or less. 
but what does a query look like that we send to Elastic? Yeah, so how, how does it work? Uh, I'm using a Jupyter notebook with a similar um, setup or with a similar index, sorry. And um, so what we do is, you can see this here at the bottom, uh, we uh, create an endpoint in Elastic, an extension where we manage the rewriters. Yeah, so it's like a REST call. And uh, here we have a put request that says, okay, uh, I create a rewriter called word underscore break. And that's the configuration. So that's what I sent there. Yeah. And the configuration basically um, mandatory is the class. Yeah, so it's a factory that creates the rewriter. And then we have a, a configuration here. So basically here, uh, I mean, this is a bit redundant. I could have left out either this or one of those. Um, we, we say it's a German morphology, and then uh, which is the dictionary field, it's called dictionary. Um, and um, when we look up the words in the dictionary, do we lowercase them? How many expansions and so on. Yeah, so that's basically uh, how we do it. And you, you just send it there. And then later on, when you do, when you run a request, uh, and that's what we say here, uh, you say, okay, part of this request is the request chain and we add a list of rewriters. Yeah, so you might remember they are uh, uh, called one by one, and that's basically the list that I define here in the request. I go to the um, other uh, options that I have here. The same for, or similarly for the um, uh, common rules rewriter, so the one with the synonyms and so on. Uh, but here uh, I have, again, the, the class that I define, uh, we have some info uh, logging to which the rewriter can send the information, what rules were applied. I can turn this on and off. And then I have the rules themselves. And uh, in this notebook, I basically say, okay, I enter the rules down here. Uh, so now it's empty. And when I run the search for this query notebook, uh, I get my accessories, right? And uh, then uh, I can start a rule and Basically, in the simple syntax, it would look like this. Yeah, so th that's the input definition. And uh, then I boost this up. Yeah, and the synonym would basically look like this. And so on. Yeah, so that's a simple text file definition. And you can yeah. upload this. And then when I run this query, uh, I get what I wanted. Yeah, so that's my, my boost here. Um, as I have turned on the, the word break rewriter with the morphology for German, uh, I could go further and then say, okay, maybe I can even do this. Yeah, so that's my Hundeline example. Yeah, so what it would do under the hood is insert the, insert the E and then combine the two. Yeah, so that's basically the rule that I showed. Let's see if this works. It does. Yeah, so we get the same. Unfortunately, that's also a Boolean operator. So it's not meant as a Boolean operator here. So, uh, but you get the idea. Yeah, so that's basically my little demo of um, uh, German um, compound morphology using an English index. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, and so I've told you a bit about uh, these rules. We can come back to this. Um, I want to give you a, a bit more insights on the query structure. Yeah, and you see that there's a lot of stuff put in here, but basically this part up here. Yeah, so that's the, the important part. So <laughs> Quirky basically defines a query builder. Yeah, so like when you say it's a match query or multi-match query, so we create a new query type yeah, and uh, then you can use it like any other query. Uh, we have a bit of a quite a rich structure down here because there's so many options that you can use. But the matching query basically says uh, you match uh, on this query string. Yeah, so that's that's how it works. And then uh, you specify the query fields, so that should look familiar from the multi-match query. And uh, basically, that's easy to go from multi-match to quirky. Under the hood, the query looks a bit different and uh, I'll come back to this in a bit. Um, so then, and then the other important part down here is the, the list of rewriters. So I've spoken about 
the word break rewriter and the common rules rewriter. So I named it common demo. And uh, then you can specify uh, tons of other options. So minimum should match, should look familiar, tiebreaker should look familiar. Uh, then there's something uh, to uh, configure boosts. Uh, so um, I want to add the phrase boosts or bring that to your attention because that's not available with multi match. So basically, it means um, if you have a multi term input, let's say something like uh, what could it be? Uh, New York Airport. Yeah. So, uh, and you want to say, um, I want to, I want to that, I want to make sure that everything that has exactly this phrase uh, in it uh, would be boosted to the top. Yeah. So then you could say, oh, uh, I want to boost phrases. And if, this first one defines the boost for the full phrase. Yeah, so the New York airport, if uh, that matches in the field title, it's boosted by factor three. Yeah, and then also do this on the name field. And then the slot basically says, okay, how many tokens can be, can happen in between the, the terms. But then uh, New York and airport could be that uh, I have a match on New York, which is a partial phrase and airport someone else. Yeah, so that's why, I can also add a, a boost on the bigrams and trigrams. Yeah? And then um, basically that's a bit inspired by Solas Edis Max uh, query parser. Um, there's a bit more. Yeah? So you can also configure uh, how they go together. Yeah? And, and Solar, uh, if I have a, a bigram match, a trigram for edge, and a full phrase match, all the matches are summed up. Yeah? So the scores are summed up. Uh, here we have another tiebreaker that we can add. So there are tons of, of more options. Um, I don't know how much time I have actually. <laughs> Did I start sharp at the hour or 10 past or? Okay. As much as you want to need. Okay, so then. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so anyway, very hungry. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to go a bit into detail or I want to say, I, I quickly mention this. So, uh, the rewriters themselves, uh, when they are queried, can receive more parameters. Yeah, so I said the search engine is abstracted, but somehow uh, the, the rewriters can access the parameters. And uh, so then I have to, can pass parameters. And that's an example here uh, where I um, uh, can use some of the syntax and the rules definition um, for further filtering the queries in a contextual manner. So this query looks a bit strange to you, but it has something here that says a tenant, a tenant field, wherever this occurs, I'm going to mention this in a bit, it will occur in the rule, should equal to one. Yeah, so uh, we have specified this nowhere. So our query looks like it looked before, right? Uh, our result looks like it looked before as bad. But now I can say, oh, this one here uh, gets a field tenant, and uh, that's tenant one. I hope the syntax is okay. Uh, so if I run this now, uh, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Do I have a syntax error? No. Oh, okay. What do I have in the query? This one? Yeah, there's a command order, but then Tenant T1, tenant T1, what did I do wrong? Well, you have, like in this query, you define hmm? load. Here? Yeah, there's a sort and limit to this, and there's a command. So oh, this one? Uh, it's uh, Python, so, so it's agnostic of this. Okay. I don't know why it doesn't work. I say, if you want to filter, the tenant should be T1 for the common. Like no, <laughs> after object. Where, where do you mean? Yeah. The next one. Next one. Right. There? Yeah. Uh, no, because you close a list of rewriters. Um, this one, this is this ad has a different meaning than the ad here. Um, what did I do wrong? Uh, Let's try something else. Uh, I would have to look the, the demo, look up the demo. Um,
No. I'm sorry, I have to use the break, the pizza break, to figure this out. Uh, so usually it works, so I have to look at the syntax. So basically we can supply something that looks a bit like a JSON fragment and uh, then apply a JSON path expression to match that. Yeah, so, uh, so that means you can tag rules uh, and then uh, contextualize this. Yeah, so you could say, oh, I have tenant specific rules or I have um, uh, language specific rules or user segmentation uh, behind this and can uh, specify this in the query. Uh, but I don't know why it didn't work. Tenant T1, it says T1. Yeah, okay. So I have to. Hmm? Uh, as you learned about tenants, so the configuration of QWERTY is mm -hmm. per index, or maybe it looks like the query I could probably build per index, but the configuration. No, per it's per not per index. So the configuration is general. Yeah. So if you look at the. Um, wait, wait. If you look at this, yeah. So basically, what we do is. Uh, there's no indication to which index that would belong. And so each index could pull that uh, rewriter. Yeah. And it's distributed under the hood. Uh, so it's split out across the nodes. So you send this to one node and then all the nodes get updated. Yeah. Storing yeah, so under the, so this is so this per se is not an index, but we use an index for storing the uh, the rules. But then when the request happens, uh, we don't um, uh, pass the rules on each request. We cache this as an automatum. So the, I get this question quite a lot. Uh, how fast is it? It's it's very fast. Yeah. So it's just a it's a, an automatum that we keep in memory, as a finite state or more or less finite state, uh, to make that look up. Yeah. So it's it's quite fast for tens of thousands of rules. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. So I want to use this a bit for um for some further thoughts so um i think quirky if, if you look at this query it gives you uh quite a simple mean uh to when you build the or to to create to do complex things in a very slim manner yeah so uh what happens a lot is that teams try to create a bit of an um software architecture where they try to build the query outside uh, and then they end up with a huge query that they send to uh, Elastic. Uh, but what we do here is we say, just send us the string and a bit of configuration, uh, but then the rewriting and this complex stuff happens inside uh, Elastic. And this has its pros and cons, but I think uh, for many teams that's, that's beneficial yeah, to do it like that. Um, and I wanna give a few more thoughts on uh, benefits of query building, even without using a uh, query building using Quirky, even without uh, doing um, the rewriting, uh, without doing rewriting, just the pure query. So let's look at this query, Samsung notebooks. And uh, basically what we wanted to have in Elastic based on this, at least in the e-commerce context, uh, we wanna match both uh, Samsung and notebooks. And uh, what we would like to have is a, kind of an or, yeah, so we'd say for Samsung, we would um, uh, wanna have uh, an or between the brand Samsung, product type Samsung, and then uh, the second clause notebooks the same. Yeah, so that's basically how we want the query. Uh, unfortunately, what happens um, under the hood is if you use multi-med, something like that. Yeah, so we get a huge or uh, where we have two ends, brand Samsung, brand notebook that doesn't match, yes? They're not both brands. And uh, the same for um, the, the second field. Yeah, so uh, regardless of whether you use cross fields or whatever, the reason for this is uh, these two fields uh, have different analyzers because you wouldn't stem the brand. And then uh, Elastic says under the hood, I can't do this, I can't deal with this. Uh, I turn it in this, this type of query. And that's a problem. And that causes many teams to create uh, something like, like this. Uh, yeah, so they, they split the query outside and uh, uh, then uh, you know, send something there for Samsung, send something there for, for notebooks. And uh, I think that's, that's a problem. Yeah? And uh, you can't really deal with, with complex stuff. Yeah? So I know <laughs> the query rewriting a bit, so synonyms, let's say you have two, um, 
multi-term synonyms, they might overlap and so on. So if you do this, uh, that's that's horrible. Yeah, so uh, that's a problem. Uh, so quirky simply does what we want. Yeah, so basically it does exactly this. So we have this and, and then we match the one term in either one field or the other, and the same for the second term and combine that with a Boolean and. Uh, so again, on this note, yeah, so we simplify the query building uh, even without uh, rewriting the query. Another thing uh, that I wanna mention is um, uh, this synonym example, so more or less, uh, this is uh, the rewriting for a query personal computer. And the way Quirky does it, if you have a synonym, personal computer rewrite using PC, yeah, so, or add the synonym PC. So how do we do this? And uh, we, we do this by creating a Lucene Boolean query with two dismax queries and then uh, two term queries. Yeah, so the PC gets repeated. Yeah, so that looks a bit odd, yeah, but it's very powerful because then you can do all the overlapping stuff and so on, and the Boolean logic is the same. Yeah, so that's uh, basically a, uh, a super powerful tool and all the problems that you have with, you know, if you go to the analysis chain and position and matches of synonyms, we don't have them here. Uh, another example that I wanna give is uh, um, query is genes. And that's a real life example from a German department store query genes. And that's the first result. And so we get back this kind of um, bed cover and uh, someone has thought, okay, um, I put genes into the color field. Yeah, so, and that, uh, that was the problem. So they might have a reason you could say, oh, maybe it's not good data, but it happens. And the problem is if you look at the scoring function, uh, the, uh, we have this max query and then colored genes has a document frequency of one. And if our scoring depends on the document frequency, that means there's only one document that has this genes in the color field, it gets a super high score. And, uh, where we would expect it is the title field uh, and maybe the brand field. And uh, there we might have uh, a lot higher uh, frequencies. So documents that have uh, genes in those fields uh, will get a lower score compared to this one. So that's, that's quite a problem. And uh, what we do in uh, Quirky is we fake the document frequency. <laughs> so we say, okay, we look at this entire uh, graph or subgraph or subtree in our query tree and try to find the highest document frequency. Yeah, so that's our uh, document frequency from the title field. And then we fake them for all the other terms that come from the same input term. Yeah, so we don't have this problem here. Yeah, so they, uh, they uh, um, uh, just take the same frequency. And uh, even if the query gets more complex, yeah, so I made up this one here, yeah, like we have a synonym for genes, let's say denim trousers. Uh, so regardless how complex this subtree of the query that comes from the same input from genes is, um, we fake the frequency. Yeah, so that's um, um, uh, quite good. And at this step, you would get this also under Lucene or Elastic. Uh, uh, so you get a synonym query or blended term query um, but then as soon as it gets more complex, uh, you wouldn't get that one. Yeah, so that's, that's what we would get in, in the scene here. So we also have thoughts about scoring, so to say, not just about query rewriting. And uh, uh, you can turn the behavior off, go back to the default behavior, but uh, this is uh, how Quirky does it. And can that's- you the document frequency setting in Q25 terms? You can, yeah. So you can, uh, so uh, there's a term query, and the term query uh, creates a statistics object and you can manipulate this statistics object. Yeah? So that's, that's how you do it. So you don't have to change it in the index. It's just per query, yeah. Right, so this actually falls back on the BM25 piece. Not on BM25. So um, you provide the term statistics uh, to a similarity, okay. whatever that similarity is, yeah, so. We just fake the statistics, but are not aware what is the similarity. But then similarities that do use term statistics get that fix. And you just use the max value. Yes. 
some there is some argument that you would add them up yeah so or sum them up uh i find it more robust like this because then the document frequency uh can never exceed your index size so to say so or your, your number of documents and uh also uh we don't want to have another place where we say oh we aggregate across fields somehow yeah so um but arguably you could also use a different strategy and if if that's important you can also configure or extend it if you want yeah so that can be abstracted i think yeah all right anything else you want to know about mm -hmm. uh, regarding the sharing of the content i was wondering if that's like a way to the rules or if you can uh, no it's like any it's like any other query so it could be part of a short clause yeah, so combine it with other so let, let's say you have a boolean query and then you have your short clauses and one of them could be quirky if you want okay. so it's just like any other query type so is it like how does it look like then if you look like in the lots on the left of the or is it like you have see this query and you have like a function score query where you like manipulate everything or how does it work or do you get like all the results back and then you sort them Sort them for, uh, no uh, so it's uh in the at the log level i would say uh you don't see much in the standard uh, approach yeah so ex except if you catch the, the the explain output uh then you would get the the lucene query as it is rewritten um and then uh quirky allows you to produce additional log output so what rules have been applied yeah so or which rewriter was triggered yeah so that uh, can be enabled per request if you want that and then that would be sent to uh, uh, the log output log for j yeah so in solar we return some of the um, information about the rewriting together with the response yeah so that makes it a bit easier to to aggregate and to track yeah so uh, in e-commerce, it's quite interesting to see oh, what fraction of my traffic is influenced by rules. Yeah, so and it's easy uh, when you can add this information to the response because the client tracks this anyway. Um, in Elasticsearch, we haven't found a way to manipulate the response. Yeah, so so we have to send it to the to a log output, but then you could uh, uh, create a sync for this somewhere and send it somewhere specifically. And maybe like a follow-up question: How does it look like with like latency? Um, so we have like tests how much latency is coming from. It's uh, I mean, you can always do crazy things, yeah. So, uh, so usually it's not measurable, yeah. So if you, so it's not, um, I yeah, it would be log complexity, I think. Uh, so like a, a hash map lookup, yeah. So, uh, to to match rules. Uh, but then if you um, produce a huge output, yeah, so like, uh, I mean, I know clients who, who should have fewer rules, yeah, so one input maybe might trigger 50 rules, and then uh, that those rules also need to be converted, or their output needs to be converted to a um, Lucene query, and at that point we add fields. Let's say fifty rules times ten fields that you're searching. Yeah, so you already might have uh, five hundred query clauses. Yeah, and that can be very fat and slow. Yeah, so then it's a it's a maintenance a data problem. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but it takes time to till you get to till you get there, and then usually. Uh, this triggers a review uh, uh, of my rules, and then they groom the rules, and suddenly it's fast again. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, so it needs. So I would say it's a kind of art and the skill to maintain those rules because art. I would say you need an insight what users are really looking for and how I can, uh, you know, find some indicators, some signals in the data to push the right documents to the top, and. Um, but also a skill then to, to create this now. Yeah. What's your approach in terms of supporting the version? For example, you, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned cluster search and local search. Yeah. So like, what's the methods to support that? So um, the um, so the core component uh, usually 
has its own uh, so up to let's say so so this part is pretty independent of any search engine yeah so but it's easier to develop if you have a concrete example yeah so at the moment development um, or the, the repo uh, has solar and that core together they can be released separately but the repo uh, is there but uh, solar is quite slow at the moment uh, with their releases yeah so um, and we, we definitely have to split this and uh, uh, then it will be either elastic or uh, open search where I think the majority of the development will happen and uh, then for solar we can quite often just use an older version of the plugin as long as the tests run through I think it's safe um, but then uh, elastic and open search require us to create a new uh, plugin because uh, each time a new minor version is released or each time a bug fix version is released because we have to specify the um, version in the manifest and uh, I like this approach yeah so you say okay that's the guarantee I give you yeah so I can't give you any guarantees for later versions but it requires us to supply that version and it's a bit of a uh, I would say demand thing yeah so if someone says we need this so I mean we, we of course we want to release this as soon as possible but then I mean yesterday we had the release of uh, 842 yeah so I have I didn't have any plans this week yeah so and also my, my co-maintainers not so maybe it will be next week uh, the open search guys are a bit more strict yeah? so they say let's do this uh, within two weeks after that release so have a have a strict plan but then you also need the workforce around that yeah and then I mean the 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 release for Elastic 8 took quite long because we struggled with one issue in the test framework of Elastic um, so yeah so we are a bit of a we depend a bit on you know how difficult it is to, to follow the changes in the, in the search engine so many clients no uh, so you mean like the software you, you mean the yeah. software yeah um no we don't so we i mean the, the query builder uh that we use in java uh also works on the client side yeah so that's that's what we support the other stuff uh like uh i think you would always or many just go back to the json level um if you want you can create one yes <laughs> for your yeah. did you some do some kotlin stuff yeah. I I yes <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the the benefit would be this DSL that we use is quite stable. Yeah. So I mean, the the rewriters they get an attribute added maybe. Uh, like we will have a choice how we apply the boosts uh, very soon so um, but then apart from this it's, it's very stable so it might be worthwhile yeah? so if you have a favorite language like .NET or something uh, you might want to contribute that yeah. All right.